This video will cover exporting a 2D face of a Fusion 360 model as a DXF format, the import of that DXF into Adobe Illustrator, and then setting up the job to be laser cut in the Universal Laser Systems UCP control panel software. But first, what is a DXF? A DXF is an abbreviation of the term Drawing Exchange Format, which is a CAD data file format originally developed by Autodesk to provide the ability to move between software programs of different manufacturers. DXF files are very important for the manufacturing of 2D parts, with laser cutters, plasma cutters and warjet cutters usually relying on these file types. An engineer or designer who is having parts, laser or warjet cut out of steel for a project would need to generate a DXF to send to the manufacturer for a quote. Importantly, a DXF does not store dimensions or the measurement unit that was used to create it. So when importing into Adobe Illustrator, you will need to take care to ensure that the scale does not change. This is a common mistake. Exporting a DXF is a little bit trickier in Fusion than other programs like SOLIDWORKS, but it is still fairly straightforward to do so. If we look at this part here, we would need to create a sketch on the face that encompasses all of the desired features. Then we can simply right click on the desired sketch and select to save as a DXF. And then once saved, we can go over into Adobe Illustrator. So all we have to do is click create sketch and select this plane. And then now this sketch has been created, sketch 14 in this case, which actually has all of these features on it. But remember, a DXF does not store a dimension or measurement. So it's important you, you check what unit types your CAD program is using. Um, for Fusion, that's normally in millimeters, but it can vary depending on the default or whatever you've changed it to. So all we have to do is go right click on the sketch, click save as DXF, and then click save. So I'm gonna call it DXF1, and we'll click save. And now what we can do is we can move over into Adobe Illustrator. And so in Adobe Illustrator, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click File, New, and we're gonna create a new document or a new artboard, which is the size of the bed of the laser cutter. This tabletop that I've just exported from Fusion is quite big. So I will need to make sure that, that our artboard is the correct size. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to change the units from points, which is the default, into millimeters. We're gonna change the width to 800 millimeters and the height to 450 millimeters, which is the size of the laser cutter bed of the ULS uh, 6.120D machine um, used at the design center and also upstairs uh, in visual arts as well. And then we're gonna change the color mode to RGB. The laser cutter software, the ULS UCP control panel, essentially relies on picking up lines of a particular RGB color and stroke in order to decide what to do with each one. So it's quite important that we have this set as RGB color. And now we can click create. And now we have our artboard, which is 800 by 450. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click File, Open, and we're going to browse to the file that I've just saved, in this case, which is DXF1, and I'll click Open. Importantly here, I need to make sure that I have this as the original size. We do not want this to be scaled to fit artboard or scaled by a percentage. So we want this as original size. And because the unit that I'm importing from Fusion is already one unit is one millimeter, I wanna make sure that this is also set as one millimeter or one point. So I'll click scale one unit equals one millimeter and click original size. So here we have our DXF, which is imported. Um, as you can see here, the default size of the artboard is essentially an A4 sheet. So it's 
you know, 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters, which is obviously too small for our large uh, drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Control C and go over to our untitled document here, which we made to be 800 by 450, the size of the laser cutter bed. And then we're going to go Control V. And so now you can see that this, this part is nearly the exact size of the laser cutter bed. It's quite large. So we're going to need quite a large piece of material for this. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to change the color. So to vector cut the outside, so to, to cut the outside, normally we would uh, set the stroke to be 0 0.001. And we're going to set the color as 255 RGB red. So essentially the only color is pure red. So there's zero green and there's zero blue. And we're gonna go enter. And that's what we want. So now we can go file print. And we can say we wanna to go to the PLS 6.120D. I'm gonna click this one here. And then we're going to go user defined landscape and we're going to go print. And then we can go down to the laser cutter menu here. And as you can see, our part or where it's going to cut is now outlined in red. So everywhere that is red is going to be cut by the laser cutter. Uh, and you know, if you had other colors, blue, green, black, you could all set those to different things. So normally, Blue would be to score, and black would be to, to vector etch. And then what we can do is we can go over to settings, and we can go to material database. So I'm going to make this out of a piece of 6 to MDF, which is common for doing like router templates and things like that. And I'm going to go to the material database, and we're going to, we're going to click natural, wood, medium density fiberboard and add the thickness as six millimeters. It's important we have this material thickness as six millimeters because that actually controls the focus of the laser cutter. So on the laser cutter, you may find that the when you turn it on or when you press go or, or cut, um, you'll actually hear a slight whirring sound. And that's the actual laser cutter bed, the Z axis of the machine going up and down to make sure that it's focused properly. And we'll click apply and then OK. So then we'll be ready to go on this. Uh, I would probably move this to be more over to the left to make sure that we don't waste any more material than we need to. And we can use the focus view tool and we can pick a few points, maybe here, here and here. Obviously, I haven't got the laser cutter connect to this computer, so it's not actually going to show us, but we could select a few points on here to make sure that this shape actually fits on the material. And then we'd simply go play.